All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, let's discuss some examples. So in the first example, we're asked to decide whether the functions that we're given are actually a polynomial function or if they're just some other type of function. And if so, we're asked to write the function that we're given in standard form, which in polynomial land means that the degrees of x must be decreasing. So if we look back here, all the standard forms have decreasing degrees of x. 2, 1, 0, 3, 2, 1, 0, or 3, 2, 1, 0. And as a reminder, all the exponents of polynomials are whole numbers. So that's going to be really the thing that sort of sets things apart. So here we're given f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x to the fourth plus 6x plus 1. To rearrange we take the coefficients and the signs of the coefficients with the terms. So we rearrange this so that negative 3x to the fourth is written first because it's the highest power. Then we can rewrite or rearrange the rest of the terms. So we have 2x squared, 6x, and 1. Once the equation is written in standard form, we can start looking for are all the powers whole numbers? So 4, 2, 1, 0, yes. So since all the powers are whole numbers and the coefficients are all real numbers, negative 3, 2, 6, and 1, this is indeed a polynomial in standard form. The highest, the highest power of the variable we see here is 4, so that happens to be the degree. We're also asked to state the type of the polynomial that we have. And if it's a degree 4, hopefully remember those were called quartic polynomials. The leading coefficient is the coefficient of the degree term, or the term that has the highest power. So the degree term is negative 3x to the fourth, the degree is 4, and the leading coefficient is negative 3. For the next one, m of x equals negative 3 seventh x to the third plus 7 over x minus 3. We first start by rearranging this, uh, or rewriting this, so that you have the 7 over x can be rewritten as 7x to the negative 1. Uh, recall that we're using the negative power rule of exponents, or the negative power property of exponents. So leaving the rest as it is, we start by looking at exponents. Are all the exponents whole numbers, and negative 1 is not? Whole numbers start at 0, and then they're all positives. So is this a function? Yes. Is this a polynomial function? No. This is not a polynomial because the powers are not, or the exponents are not, all whole numbers. g of x equals root 15x plus root 5, or square root of 15x plus square root of 5. We look at powers first. x by itself is just x to the first power, so that's okay. This is a constant by itself, so this is x to the zeroth power. So all powers or all exponents are whole numbers, that's good. Are the leading coefficient, or all the coefficients really, real numbers? And indeed they are. Radicals are real numbers. They're irrational, but they all fall within the real bucket. The highest power of x we see here is 1, so that's the degree. And hopefully remember that degree 1 polynomials are called linear functions. The leading coefficient is the number attached to the leading term. The degree term is root 15x to the first power, so the leading coefficient is root 15. For the last one, p of x equals negative 2 root 3 plus 3x minus 2x squared. We rearrange so that the powers are in decreasing order or descending order. So the negative 2x squared gets written first, 3x second, and then negative 2 root 3 at the end because this is just a constant by itself. There's no variables here. We have a power of 2, and then a 1, and then the power of x here is 0, so all the powers are whole numbers. That's satisfied. All the coefficients have to be real numbers. Negative 2 is a real number, 3 is a real number, negative 2 root 3 is irrational, but it still falls under the real numbers. The degree here, the highest power of the variable we see here is 2, so that's our degree. A degree 2 polynomial is called quadratic, so that's the type. And then the leading coefficient, the coefficient of the degree term, is negative 2. So that goes there. Let's do one more before we pause. 
Here we're asked to evaluate functions for given values of x. So this is something you've done since middle school. This should not be a surprise. Here we're given a polynomial or a function, h of x equals negative x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. And we're asked to evaluate this function at x equals 2. All that means is wherever you see an x in the function, replace it with 2. Now I would like for you to pay close attention to the notation. This will be my expectation moving forward. Notice that if I'm asking you to evaluate a function, the function named is h, x is being replaced with 2. And when we do that, all the x's in the function itself get replaced with 2. So notice that I wrote h of 2 equals the expression with 2 plugged in. And then there's an equal directly underneath it. And now I'm simplifying the expression itself. So 2 to the third is 8. Remember, exponents have to happen before multiplication, order of operations. Similarly, 2 squared is 4. Here, there's no exponent, so I can just go ahead with the multiplication. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. The rest of this is just the arithmetic. You can follow order of operations to get negative 18 as the answer. So we found that h of 2 equals negative 18. Similarly, if we have g of x equals x to the fourth minus 32x squared plus 256, if we're asked to find g of negative 4, this is the same question really as this. We're just given uh, the same exact information in two different forms. Here we were explicitly told that x was 2. Here we are implicitly told, so it's not completely obvious. Well, it is obvious, but... Uh, it, it doesn't spell out exactly x equals negative 4. So here, you do the exact same thing. If you're asked to find g of negative 4, you start by writing that. The moment you write g of negative 4, you can no longer write x's here. All the x's have to get replaced with negative 4. Same thing here. The moment you write h of 2, you have to replace all the x's with 2. If you write h of x, all the x's need to remain in the problem because those are two different things. h of x is the original function that we were given. h of 2 is a specific evaluation of the function at a given point. So here again, if we plug in negative 4, I'm sure you can carry out the computations, but we get 0 as the answer. And then finally, for this function, we did the same thing. The notation here is what I'm, I'm trying to get across f of negative 1 means take the function f, wherever you see an x, replace it with negative 1. So you get 3 times negative 1 to the 40th minus 2 times negative 1 to the 15th plus 5 times negative 1 squared plus 7. Note that the exponentiation happened first because, again, we have to follow order of operations. Negative 1 to an even power will just be 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Similarly, negative 1 to an odd power is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Negative 1 to an even power is positive 1, times 5 is 5. And then the plus 7 just comes along. Cleaning this up, we get f of f, sorry, we get f of negative 1 equals 17. Hopefully that helps. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.